to sort of grow up on their own. That's why in that particular tradition, they would rape the boy, but not the girl. The girl had to have kids, or she had to get married, and she had her period, she had to man get the water, whatever it was that they did on the tribe, and she was sort of forced to grow up that way. That's not necessarily the truth nowadays, but that was the rationale in the Native American tradition. So they would actually have to psychologically rip the boy from his mother so that he could grow up and choose to be an adult because we don't choose to grow up. Growing up, Peter Pan, we did a whole lecture on that, growing up means not having a Costco card. It means having a Nordstrom card. And we don't want to. We don't want to. So life must rape you. We must get raped. My rape came when I married my first husband and I got pregnant. So I got raped at 25. Unfortunately, some people legitimately get raped at three or at seven. Yes. Some people lose their mother at 10 or 11, and that's a rape because they have to grow up and support Getting the home. Out at 12. Getting kicked out at 12 was your rape at a young age. Some people don't get raped until they're 70 when their mom dies. Yeah. Maybe lucky them, I don't know. We must get raped. The myth of Persephone is super, super, super important. I gave you a handout with this explanation. So, she's down in the underworld, and she has sex. But before she has sex, she is given a pomegranate. What time of the year does the pomegranate come out? What season? Yeah, it's spring. No, nope. look at the color in the fall. Yes, the color of the fruits and vegetables indicate the season that they come most of the time. So it's a fall fruit, and this has symbolism in a minute. And there is a rule. What did I tell you about metaphysical law or even earthly law? Just because you don't know it doesn't mean you're not held to it, right? So there was a law in the underworld that Persephone was not aware of, or maybe she was. That if you eat something while you're in the underworld, you are um, accepting to be a guest there. That you're willingly living in the underworld. So, he comes, he opens up the pomegranate, and he gives her six seeds. Why six? Okay. Six is for the six months that she lives with her husband and six months as she lives back on earth with her mom. So she's down there, she eats the six pomegranate seeds, she agrees to marry Hades and be his wife, and she starts missing her mom, as James missed his mom when he was in the military, he wanted a home-cooked meal. So your duty ended, and you go back home, or you come home for Christmas, or whenever you're allowed, I don't know how that works, and you go back home. There's a story in the Bible that is called the prodigal son. This is that story. Let me finish with Persephone. So Persephone is missing her mom and says to her husband, I miss my mom. And he's like, well, I don't care. And Demeter's upstairs looking for his, her daughter, going crazy, and of course goes to Zeus. And Zeus is like, look, Hades, let her go visit her mom six months out of the year when it's spring and summer, and you keep her when it's fall and winter. So it's believed that Mother Earth is sad during fall and winter, and that's why she doesn't give any produce or fruit or grains or anything during those cold winter months, because she's crying and she's sad. In the summer and the spring, she's with her daughter, so she's happy. So, the story or the myth of the prodigal son in the Bible, does anyone know it? I just know the quote, like the prodigal son returns. Okay, the prodigal that. son returns. Very important. The story of the prodigal son is that there is a man, a farmer I think, and he is the father of two boys. And one of the boys decides to go on an adventure and leave home. And the other one decides to stay home with his dad. He helps man the land, and 5, 10, 15, 20 years, I don't know how many years pass, and all of a sudden, the dad sees down the hall, down the road, 
his son returning. And he runs to him, son, son, I knew you would come back one day. And he throws him this huge party. Now the brother who stayed and worked with the dad could be pissed. And he's like, dad, why the hell are you throwing a party when I'm the OG? I stayed with you, right? <laughs> I'm the one who stayed, I'm the one that did the work. But you're throwing a party for my brother? And he says, son, it's because he left and he returned. The hero's journey, every single story, is one about leaving home, getting tested, changing, and coming back home. Has anyone ever heard of chop wood, get enlightened, chop wood? Okay. In New Age or spiritual or enlightenment circles, this is a saying that we have. It means that once you get enlightened, you still go back home to do the same boring, mundane chores that you did before. People do not glow. People do not float. People do not have special anything. It is simply enlightenment, simply the hero's journey. You must leave home or get raped. You must have some test, being away, going to war, whatever it was that happened in the military, at 12 years old, going to the streets, living in people's closets, changing as a result, adult, so we have child, teenager, adult, right? And then coming right back home like the prodigal son. The other kid didn't leave. He never went on his journey. He never found his purpose. He never went to look enlightened. He never changed. He stayed safe under the parents. There is no applause for that, people. Go and live your life. You do not get rewarded or applauded in this life by staying put and not fulfilling what your soul came to fulfill. That bullshit that you have to stay home and take care of your parents, not true. That is you being a scaredy cat. Fortunately or unfortunately, we all have that in our chart. It is where you find the sign cancer, which is the sign of the home and the family and the mother. Everyone has it somewhere. We don't want to leave home. That is why, like in the natives, they put the mask and they rip you from your mother. That's why the military raped you. That's why your mother raped you when she threw you out at 12. That's why I was raped when I was forced into this marriage. That's the bottom line. You must leave home and change and go back home. But now you're different. Your transaction has changed. You have changed from mother, father, child to adult, adult, adult. If you go back home and resume the same relationship as you had with your parents, with no boundaries, with no inability to say what you have to say, then what the hell was the purpose of the journey? That's right. You're not enlightened. You stayed the same. The hero's journey requires us to change. If you're into this, listen or read Joseph Campbell. His famous book, A Hero with a Thousand Faces, I brought it the other day, but I brought it back home, is amazing. Because it talks about how every tradition and every culture has this. Every story is about the hero getting called, they have to get tested, they change and they come back to tell the story. Chop wood, get enlightened, chop wood. You do not come back home with any special power. The only thing you come back home with is knowledge of self. This inner circle, this inner circle, that's all it is. You come home and then what does every single person that goes on a journey do? When they get back, they write a book. They tell the world all about their journey. That's the creation. You might
might come back and have a kid. You might come back and become an artist. You might come back and discover your own nonprofit. You create something with that change. That's the energy. But you must be raped. You must leave. You must change and you must return. So you have a handout where I talk about three specific myths. I think it's this one. The Heros Gamos, which I'm going to talk about now. The rape of Persephone takes you to your adult self. The return home is the prodigal son. Leaving home has to do with Chiron. The mystical marriage, I'm going to talk about this now, is the marriage to self. You cannot be whole in a relationship without being whole with the self. You must leave home like in the myth of the prodigal son. There must be a rape like in the myth of Persephone. And you must find your own way to heal your wounds, like in the myth of Chiron, and return home with your own solution. That's why I spend time on these three myths. This, you leave, no. You leave, you go into the underworld, you must go through a chaos. You must have a teen year. And then Chiron is the return, where you are now changed and you find your own solution. Does anyone remember what Chiron's solution was? What was that? When he chose to die and switch places with Prometheus. Yes. Those three steps, every single human being over and over and over again are going to do. So are we all enlightened? Yes. Because every single time we do this, willingly or unwillingly, we raise our consciousness. Hopefully, <coughs> if we do the work. If you don't do the work, what was it that you heard yesterday on Oprah? Do the work and then let things come to you. Let things happen. You have to do the work, okay? So if you do this, then you now have reached home, you chopped wood before, you were an electrician before, you were an author before, you were a teacher before, you're gonna do the same boring, mundane job. You are not gonna have a halo and glow. That's bullshit. You're gonna go about your life. The thing is, you now have higher consciousness. That is all that this world is about. That's why my coaching thing is called consciousness coaching. Because you become a consciousness coach. You help people in the therapeutic session to gain consciousness of their issues, of what is happening to them, of what's next. But you don't do the work. They do the work. Okay? Any questions on this? I'm going to leave the center, but I want to talk about the hero scholars. No? Okay. Okay, so the Heros Gamos is a term that means mystical marriage. And the mystical marriage has to do with the marriage of self. So it's another way to describe this, okay? Heros, Gamos, or mystical marriage. And you have a handout on this. So what happens? When you return home from that journey, changed? What changed when you got back from the military? Were you changed? Yeah, I had a sense of responsibility for myself. Or a sense of responsibility. What archetype is that? What planning? I want you
you guys to know this stuff, that when you hear words from people, you can identify. That is rules and structure. Remember with the infinity, that's Saturn. Responsibility is Saturn. Therefore, that's adult, that grew you up. Yeah. You use the exact word that represented that experience. Continue. And then, um, I kind of just, I felt like, just uh, like my own person, if you will. Exactly like that. Thank you. Perfect. My own person. What happened to Chiron? What's the Chiron story? What's the beginning? The beginning, beginning of the story. How did he become the child of God's children's uh, teacher? Okay, but where did he get the knowledge? What happened first? So first thing that happened to Chiron. He was adopted. He was discarded. His mother thought he was gross because he was half animal and half human. And she threw him to the side. The gods felt bad for him and they, abandoned, they adopted him. You are Chiron. The myth of Chiron, when we do astrology and you see Chiron, that is where you have your self-mastery. And it's also, Aniela, like you said, where you have your wound. It's both, zero, a hundred. So wherever you have your strengths, I personally think my strength is teaching, that's where I have a mastery. But wherever I have Chiron, I also have a wound there that happens to be in my fourth house of my family. And I could have told you I was the black sheep up until just yesterday. So it's both things. It's your self-mastery, so you must have been good at your skill, whether it was nursing or whatever else you did in the military, but there was also a wound where you needed to nurse yourself. There had to be. If not, he wouldn't have picked that profession in the military. James needed to nurse himself, and that profession happens to be ruled by Neptune. I would eventually like for you guys to learn the professions that are ruled by each planet so that when your client comes in with a profession, you already know what myth they're living, what archetype. That's how easy this is. It becomes like crazy textbook. The other day, my daughter went to work. She made a comment about one of her bosses. And I said, that woman has to have a younger sister who she took care of or where she was responsible and the sister's irresponsible. She's like, how the hell? She goes, I don't know why I'm surprised. I do this all day. This is not like a shock to my, kill my children. She goes, I don't know why I'm surprised, but how the hell did you know that? And I told her. So it isn't that difficult. Our human behavior is repeatedly, and I'm speaking normal. I'm not speaking about deviant behavior. I don't work in that field. Okay, so I say that again. So when you go and you become responsible, you needed to be your own person, okay? So did Chiron. Chiron's job was to teach others and to heal others. And when he had the wound, what happened? He went knocking on everyone's door and no one had the answer. But what did he do? He gave you an ayapesita, he gave you a little antidote, a little aromatherapy, and he healed everybody. But what about his wound? He had to find it in himself to heal it. When you return from your journey, and then again and again and again, usually during the skinny cows, you learn to marry yourself. That is what this is. You learn marriage to self. This is your masculine, your feminine, this is your masculine, your creative energy is the book that you wrote, or the child, or the artwork, whatever it is, and you created something by yourself, you painted, you wrote, okay, and you get married to yourself because you need to become your own person. This is the authentic self. This is when you strip away this, 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 and 
all that's left is this. This is your guidance, your intuition, your inner God, whatever you want to call it. This is when you start listening to who? To you. To you. <clears throat> and you stop. Do you have the answer? Are you my mother? Can you give me a reading? What's the answer? What do I do? And you sit, perhaps quietly, perhaps in meditation, perhaps in whatever format it is, and you listen to what your inner guidance is saying, and that's what you do. And then you walk through life, married to yourself, not, ooh, Zulily's shiny, she must have the answer. Ooh, Marsha has a pendulum, she might have the answer. Ooh, there's that tarot, can you tell me la carta? Oh, do you read, do you psychic, do you do readings, can you read me? There's nothing wrong to going to guidance. There's nothing wrong to asking another person that has gifts to help you. But then you take that information home and you process it with your own intuition. And, and this is my, what was that? And realize that you knew it the whole time. And realize that you knew it the whole time, absolutely. This is why I'm so terrified of what's coming. We are in what I call a spiritual holocaust. People are obsessed with going to psychics and mediums and readers. And great, I'm busy. But I don't take anyone's power. These other people, when they lead you to believe that you need them, that they have the answers, and they don't encourage you to develop your own in intuition, they are taking your power. And the gurus and the teachers and the people that are ru ruling now, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. If you haven't already, watch Wild Wild Country on Netflix. You saw that? Okay? <laughs> on the story of Osho, just so you have an idea of what cult living is like. Now, I didn't live in a cult like that. We didn't live on a commune. We lived in our own houses and stuff like that. Wild, so there's wild, various wild. ways. Wild, wild country. country. But there's different ways. But the thing is that in any cult relationship or any abusive relationship, the person is robbed of their own authenticity. They're robbed of their own light. They're robbed of their own inner voice. Mm -hmm. They give it away. They say, you know more than me. What should I do? So go and get guidance. That's why people come to people like us and, and, and they get therapy. But you cannot work harder than your client and you cannot rob anyone's power. That is wrong. And I am terrified of what is happening and what will continue to happen in what I am calling a spiritual holocaust. You see it everywhere now. Everywhere. It is crazy. It is so sick. I was in, I was into uh, a couple years ago because of my mom. I was like super locked into like Santeria and stuff like that. Like not, I mean, not to the point where I was gonna freaking shake my head bald and freaking, you know, do all that. Maybe that's what people think I am. But that's what <laughs> I, I think that's when it got to that point where I was like, well, no, why? Because they, like, I mean, I had her people constantly, like, trying to tell me what to do with my life. And, and then one day they came to me and told me, oh, you have to shave your head bald and wear white for a year and blah, blah. And I was like, what? No. And it's all motivated <laughs> by one thing. Money. Yeah. It's, it's all every single motivated. Time it's like yeah, and the santo would have been thousands. I heard that Shakira paid, I don't know how many thousands, but it says santo. I had yeah. one, yeah. Thousands and thousands there was of one dollars. Guy, there was one guy that my mom Shakira, had. what's the other one? <laughs> if it's not Shakira, it's the other one. It starts with a T. Talia? Maybe, Maybe yeah. Maybe Dalia, one of those. My mom met one guy who she introduced me to who oh, yeah, took a whole bunch of ah, my money. Like at one point, like, because I was, you know, like whatever my mom was telling me to do, I did it during that time. And I literally, like, he took a whole bunch of my money. My husband was so pissed. But one day he came and he met us up at the house and my husband was at work. And he still doesn't know there's something I'm never telling him because he won't go okay, this, to this then. guy. Don't watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he tried to freaking like, like come on to me like really 
that. Oh, and I was alone. And those are so I common. To sit there and in a lot of these so organizations, common. money is obviously the ruling factor. Mm -hmm. Sexuality, where so many gurus. I mean, I know not too far from here, um, several gurus that sleep with their disciples. Yeah, he tried Very to tell common. me. He was trying to tell me that power, of course. Mm -hmm. I money. need to. I, you need to like let me like ha get your husband's spirit to come into me, and then I'll do things. I was like, oh, oh. as soon as he said that, I was like, what? And he because you have like, a mind of your own. Yeah, no. Because like, you're listening to your I, inner guidance. Yeah, go. But <laughs> how many people are doing that and no, paying thousands and thousands that's of exactly dollars? That's exactly what I thought. Giving up. You know, their sexuality, all in the name of I have a...